I recently spent $40 on this old mahogany dresser with a pink Barbie themed makeover and as I spent days removing all of the paint from this dresser, I often wondered what I had gotten myself into. Thank you Birch Living for sponsoring this project. My name is Barry and welcome to Mad City Modern. At the time of this video, the new Barbie movie has earned more than $1.3 billion at the box office worldwide, making it the highest grossing film in Warner Brothers' 100 year history. I didn't see the movie, but I realized it wouldn't take long for new makeover ideas to impact the furniture world. I found this listing for an antique wood woke Barbie dresser for people, and I paid $40 for it. As I was working on this dresser, I realized that all of my furniture projects fall into at least one of three categories. I'm curious to know if you can relate to any of these three categories with your own DIY projects. The first is my least favorite, and that is money projects. These are often the commission pieces, or the pieces that need to be restored and refinished to sell for a profit. These projects are often my least favorite because they come with deadlines and expectations. However, they do support the business, so they are necessary. This Barbie dresser falls into the next category, and that is education projects. These are the furniture pieces that allow me to practice new skills and techniques, and once restored, they typically have little to no resale value. I'm approaching this challenge fully expecting to lose money on this dresser, and once refinished, it will be donated. But through this journey, I hope to learn new sanding techniques, veneer repairs, and refinishing techniques. All those skills are necessary to continue getting better at this craft. The third category of projects is passion projects. Those are often family heirloom pieces that I'm able to restore and refinish, or just pieces that have amazing stories attached. If you've seen other videos on this channel, then you probably understand which projects are the passion projects. Since this dresser will be donated, I'm grateful to Birch Living for making this project possible. And I appreciate you understanding that it's necessary to continue creating content like this. Birch Living has been a longtime sponsor of the channel, and I've had my Birch Lux mattress for more than a year now. It's a premium upgrade to their original, well-loved, natural Birch mattress. I've had a chance to use this mattress during the hottest months of the summer. And surprisingly, with its organic materials, this mattress has kept me nice and cool while I sleep. Now that the cooler fall weather is here in Wisconsin, I'm also able to rely on this mattress to keep me nice and warm while I sleep. The Birch Lux mattress is comprised of eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. I love my Birch Lux mattress, and I can honestly say this is the best mattress that I have ever owned. 
One of the best parts is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door, free within the US. They also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. Once again, I love my Birch mattress and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or visit birchliving.com forward slash mad city to get 20% off your Birch mattress and two free pillows. Thank you Birch Living for sponsoring this video. I'll remove most of the paint from this furniture with a chemical stripper, but I'll start with this carbide scraper to understand what type of wood species I'm working with on this dresser. In this case, it appears to be mostly a thin layer of mahogany veneer. This would be a good opportunity to say that I understand there are folks who criticize those who paint furniture. I simply enjoy sharing the challenges that come with these transformations. And my own work has been public for long enough that I'm more than comfortable with any criticism regarding my own shortcomings. I'll continue to do the best that I can and learn from my mistakes. <coughs> I'll test the hardware with a magnet. Anything non-magnetic would likely indicate that this is solid brass. In this case, it only appears to be brass plated.
I'm hoping it makes more sense why I'm calling this an educational project. This is an old furniture piece that really doesn't have much resale value, and it gives me a chance to practice with these various power sanders, as well as other sanding tools. Repairing thin veneer on old furniture can be intimidating, but if you're able to identify the wood species and find a close match, then it's just like cutting out pieces of a puzzle. Once you're able to match the missing piece, then all you need to do is glue it down and sand it back. I found that the surf prep orbital sander is more efficient on larger surface areas. And as I'm working through 80 grit to 150 grit to 220 grit, I'm noticing large scratches across the top of this dresser. There are also areas with significant stains, and maybe this is why someone decided to paint this piece in the first place. I'm not looking for perfection with this project, but I'll try oxalic acid to remove some of the major stains. Not only will the acid help remove the stains, but by adding water, this will help raise the grain and make it easier to sand out the stains.
If this had been a commission piece or a family heirloom, then I likely would have chosen a dark stain with a traditional top coat like lacquer or shellac. But since this piece had several stains and other areas with significant damage, then my choice was to try and conceal that as much as possible. I'll first apply a gray water-based wood stain to the entire dresser, then wipe it back immediately with a paper towel. My first idea was to add just a clear coat to give this mahogany the most natural look, but trust me when I say there were too many imperfections on this piece for that option. At this point, this looks like a lot of gray, but as I wipe it back and as it dries, it will appear very faint, as you'll see. I'll then add this brown glaze effect to give this piece a more natural look. Here's a good example of a major stain that I'm doing my best to conceal with both the gray and the brown. I was able to polish most of the brass plated hardware and now I'll apply a clear coat of lacquer for brass. I'll finish this dresser by applying several coats of flat water-based polyurethane. In my opinion, this flat finish looks better on antiques, but for this dresser, I think a satin finish would have looked much better. Books have been written about the hundreds of options possible for refinishing furniture. Moving forward, I think my preference will be to use the least amount of artificial finishes possible in order to showcase the natural beauty in the wood grain. So did this Barbie nightmare turn out the way I had hoped? Far from it, but I'm grateful to have learned from this project. And who knows, maybe the new owner will paint this piece once again. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye for now.